Would you like to know why Lucifer is not mentioned in the Book of Enoch but Watchers, Fallen Angels, Nephilim Giants, and even Demons were? Yes, you read correctly, the Book of Enoch, which is a guide for fallen angels, does not contain a mention of Lucifer, the devil, or Satan as they prefer to refer to him. As it happens, there's a strange explanation, you won't believe it. First of all, the Book of Enoch really identifies Semjaza as the commander of the Grigori, or fallen angels. Azael, Azazel, and Lucifer in relation to Semjaza are not mentioned in the Book of Enoch. In some views, Lucifer and Azael are two different entities, in Christian history, Lucifer is often associated with the fallen angel Satan. Various mythical and religious traditions, however, may interpret these people in different ways. If Azazel and Semjaza were fallen angels and not Lucifer, then who were they exactly? Additionally, all sin is assigned to Azazel because of the works he preached, which polluted the entire globe. Section 9 of Chapter 10 of the Book of Enoch If you do some research on this subject, you will find some startling facts. For example, in the old oral tradition of the Quran, Iblis, the Arabic word for Lucifer, was once called Azazel. His name means the left hand of God since he is the opposite of Yeshua, or Jesus Christ, the right hand of God. In certain versions of the Torah, Aaron offers two goats as a sacrifice in the book of Leviticus. Azazel is addressed in one, and Jehovah is addressed in the other. In modern translations, Azazel is made into a scapegoat. Baphomet, the goat-headed demon that the Templar Knights secretly worshipped, was another name for Azazel. He goes by a number of names, such as Azrael, Samayaza, Lucifer, Moloch, and Samuel. The strangest thing about the entire story is that this isn't a spiritual being. According to legend, Azazel is undeniably tangible, having taken over the majority of the governments, media, and corporations in the world. The term, Lucifer, is not found in the old biblical writings, nor is it suggested to be a proper noun. This is a common misconception resulting from a superficial reading of the Bible. Isaiah 14 verse 12 is the scripture that frequently conjures up strong images of you since the word, Helel, is only used in this particular context in the Bible. This word literally means, a shining one, in Hebrew. Thus, if you translate from English accurately and literally, the text will show shining one or a phrase that sounds a lot like it. This linguistic insight clarifies the term Helel's symbolic meaning and its depiction of a bright or luminous entity, may be implying celestial characteristics or divine symbolism in the text. The Hebrew phrase, Helel, was translated by the Romans as, Lucifer, which means, shining one, in Latin. Thus, Lucifer, functions as the Hebrew terms, Helel, Latin equivalent. This linguistic relationship emphasizes the idea of luminosity or brilliance connected to the original Hebrew phrase and its Latin translation. According to Roman Catholic doctrine, this passage refers to Satan rather than the king of Babylon, as the context of Isaiah 14 verse 14 would have it. Since they saw Lucifer as the embodiment of Satan, the term gained recognition and was approved as a proper noun, as a result, it was capitalized to Lucifer and included in official Roman Catholic doctrine. During the Reformation, a number of Protestant churches embraced the Roman Catholic meaning of this term. Because of this, rather than translating the Hebrew term, Helel, literally when translating the scriptures into English, the Roman Catholic interpretation was introduced into the translations of the day by using the Latin name Lucifer. Theological Dynamic Equivalence Translation Method is the name given to this translation methodology. Unlike some of the previous translations, a large number of modern English translations of the Old Testament are based on the Hebrew text rather than the Latin, and they translate Hebrew words literally into English without using the Latin. It is appropriate to read the scriptures from the Hebrew text of the Old Testament rather than the Latin Old Testament. The Watchers were angels who rebelled against God and the elements by taking on human form, getting married to terrestrial women, and producing the hybrid offspring known as the Nephilim. Semzea was the head of the Watchers. Here's where some variations exist. Although this may sound like science fiction, 
the whole scenario is explained in Genesis 6 verses 1 to 4 in the Bible. This increased the level of immorality that caused God to bring the global flood. It was the Watcher's responsibility to monitor the human residents and offer support or direction. Angels cannot create other angels, but they have access to all the tools of man when they take on the human form. These people returned in greater numbers after the deluge killed sinful humanity and the Nephilim. The Nephilim were people who lived on earth both before and after the flood, according to Genesis 6 verse 4. Now, we were informed in Numbers 13 colon 27 33 that the spirits of the Nephilim that perished are represented by demons, ghosts, and bad spirits. God, therefore, always allows Satan and his fallen angels to operate on their own, with Satan acting as their leader. In addition, Revelation 20 verse 10 states that the angels who carried out this horrible deed, marriage with humans, are being held captive in a place called Tartarus, which is comparable to hell, until the lake of flaming sulfur. According to Jude 1 verse 6 and 2 Peter 2 verse 4, these fallen angels are imprisoned until judgment. Until the day of judgment, God permits Satan and his angels to live in freedom. It appears that Samziah and Azazel would be distinct creatures if Satan is Lucifer. The Book of Enoch explains a great deal about fallen angels, and Lucifer is noticeably missing. However, the book was removed from the Torah in the first century because references to a future Messiah, Jesus, offended God's people, the Jews. The early church fathers were all in favor of this work. It was removed from the Bible by the later Roman Catholic Church because it did not conform to their structured conception of the Gospel. The Torah and Bible tell the story of Lucifer, saying that God created an angel by the name of Lucifer. Isaiah 14 verse 12 Lucifer, son of the morning, how have you fallen from heaven? How are you brought to your knees after weakening the countries? But because it was against the rules to try to become God and rule heaven, Lucifer was banished from heaven. Isaiah 14 verses 13 to 15, verse 13, Because you have secretly declared in your heart that you will ascend into heaven, set your throne above the stars of God, and sit on the mount of the congregation in the northern boundaries, verse 14, I will rise above the cloud's highest points and become like the Most High. Verse 15, However, you will be carried down to the sides of the pit, to hell. According to the book of Revelation 12 verses 8 to 9, it was Jesus Christ, not the angel Michael, who drove Lucifer from paradise. Pride was supposed to be the sin that ultimately caused Lucifer's downfall. I will lay thee before kings so that they may see you, Ezekiel 28 verse 17 says, Thy heart was lifted up because of thy beauty, thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. However, Luke 10 verse 18 records, And he said unto them, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Lucifer was a cherub, one of the angels that surrounded and exalted God's throne. With a sense of entitlement, Lucifer convinced one-third of God's angels to side with him in his disobedience against the Almighty. Demons, also referred to as fallen angels, are hence creatures of heaven. Although hell was originally intended for the devil and his minions, far too many people will end up there as a result of rejecting Jesus Christ's plan for a route to paradise. Satan, formerly known as Lucifer, will ultimately burn in hell. According to Revelation 20 verse 10, the devil who tricked them was put into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the false prophet and the beast are, and he will suffer day and night for all eternity. There was no necessity for Lucifer to be addressed in the book of Enoch since its whole focus was on the Watchers, who subsequently evolved into the fallen angels. Thank you for your support.